Good morning, and welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the Solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. I'm Sarah, this is Scott, and we will lead the music. While only the cantor is able to sing during this phase of reopening the church, the music and readings for this Mass can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy is Father Wilson Smith and uh, no. I'll about that. Preaching is Father Wilson and uh, presiding is Father Wilson Smith. Our gathering song is Epiphany Carol. Every nation sees the glory of a star that pierced the night. As we tell the wondrous story, we are bathed in radiant light. Stars sent forth from highest heaven, dancing light of God's design. Shine upon the gift that's given, word made flesh now born in time. Every tongue shall sing the praises of his birth in deepest night. He is healing for the ages, he is Christ our God's delight. He proclaims with shall die to raise redeeming all who follow with their lives. Let us be gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the epiphany of the Lord, the showing forth of Christ to the whole world. And so let us pray for the, the gift of vision, that we may see God dwelling in our midst, and that others may see the presence of God within us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. Jesus Christ. 
ends of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
creation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. O oh God, with your judgment endow the King, with your justice endow the King's Son. With justice you will govern your people, your afflicted ones with right judgment. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore Lasting peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore you. And the isles offer gifts, those from Seba and Arabia bring tribute. All kings shall pay him their homage, all nations shall serve him. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth. Will adore you, Lord. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters. You have heard the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles and co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? He, we saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After, after their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to begin today by reading a brief selection from the great American poet Mariah Carey. In the Christmas of 1994, Carey wrote as follows, I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. Deeply moving. Now, I could just end the homily there, could I not? I think, we, I, you know, I could sit down, we could all connect the dots. But what fun would that be? Actually, it would be kind of fun. But let's not do that. Instead, I'll talk just a little bit longer. So long as we strive, all of us, to keep that basic theme, all I want for Christmas is you, in our minds. We're celebrating Epiphany today. Epiphany means a revealing. That's certainly true for us today as we read about these magi who are following a star, right, that is revealing to them the location of the newly born Messiah, the Christ, who, as it happens, is the fullness of God's revealing, his revelation in the flesh. Magi in those early Greek manuscripts of Matthew's Gospel could refer to a few things, but a very likely contender is that these were Persian astrologers, People like this had a kind of a priestly, advisory kind of role in the royal courts of many eastern kingdoms, including the Babylonian and Assyrian empires. Now, so they're not only gifted and trained, but really commissioned in the science of reading the stars and discerning what they mean for the present and for the future. So in that sense, following a star for them is not that outlandish, not as much as it would have sounded to someone else who maybe does not espouse that science or spirituality. So the Gospels, you know, they don't explicitly say that there are three of them, but we likely have assumed that from the number of gifts, which implies that each one is carrying a gift. 
Uh, a tradition dating to at least the seventh century goes as far as to name these magi. You may have heard some of them as you were growing up in the church. If you were, you know, you, you got your Casper, Melchior, right? And then you have the third one. It's Jeff. That's not right. It's not Jeff, it's Belfazar. I always think it would be fun if you have these cool names and one guy is just like Jeff. So it's Balthazar, right? If you take home from the comments today, you know, we have those blue epiphany, the, the house blessing leaflets for your home, or you can download that on our website as well. Um, you'll see instructions to write with chalk over the entrance, over the doorway, 20, and then three letters, and then 21. That's the year. The three letters are CMB. So in our tradition, that actually can have a dual meaning. One is Christus Mansionum Benedicat, which translates to, may Christ bless this home. But it can also stand for Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. Why the association of the three magi with the blessing of a home? Well, you know, the magi come to visit the manger in Bethlehem, and bearing these gifts communicates the specialness or the blessedness of the occupant inside the manger. And it's the same deal with house blessings. The blessing is about the specialness of the people being visited, the people who live in that home, rather. So I think it's fun to kind of picture how that first visit may have transpired once the three magi had arrived. You know, we might imagine one of the shepherds who had already been there kind of standing by the door, maybe for protection, maybe looking out for future visitors. And then these very fancily dressed people come approaching, bearing gifts. And they say, we're here for the Christ. I, Caspar, have brought gold, the appropriate gift to give to a king. I, Melchior, have brought frankincense, the fitting gift for a priest who must burn incense in the sanctuary, the smoke rising as prayers to heaven. And I, Jeff, I'm just kidding, Balthazar, I, Balthazar, bring myrrh, right? And myrrh, too, has significance. This myrrh is a, a perfumed resin suitable to anoint the body of one who has died. And then the shepherd says, you guys know he's a baby, right? He's a baby. What are these gifts? And they're like, yeah, we know, but he's Jesus. We assume, you know, somebody else already got him a blankie or something. We want to recognize his specialness. So those are the wonderful gifts that make all kind of cultural and religious sense. They have that significance to represent who Jesus is. But not to be overlooked in all of that is the greatest possible gift these magi could give, which is their presence. That is the gift of themselves. These are Gentiles, right? These are not Jews who have the prophetic background of expecting a Messiah and a Savior and all the ideas about what that would look like. So how great must their faith be, right? To one, believe that Jesus Christ is their Savior, and two, to appreciate and have the urgency to want to come and honor him by seeing him. Urgent and important enough that they couldn't just send messengers. They, they had to be there themselves. And so I arrive if you will, at the, the thesis of this homily. You know, this Christmas, many of us have made Christmas lists. We've asked for things. We've given things. For most of us, we probably could not see our extended families and loved ones as we'd like to because of the pandemic. So maybe we mailed stuff or we Zoomed in or we phoned in. And I'm sure all of these things and all of these gifts were and are so appreciated, of course. But, you know, if we were to ask our faraway siblings and parents and loved ones, you know, what would they most have liked for this Christmas? You know what their answer would have been? Bro, all I want for Christmas is you. And it's true, isn't it? If it's true for those whom we love and are loved by in this life, can you fathom how much more it would be true for the Son of God who lived and died out of love for us, who came into the world this fragile and vulnerable infant, 
Little infant baby Jesus, eight pounds, nine ounces, don't even know the world yet, etc., etc. He taught us all he could about God and the kingdom of love, who taught us to love one another so we could be prepared for it, who knew of our frailty and of our weakness and of our sin and went to the cross not in spite of it but out of love for it. I've said this once or twice, you know, in daily mass context, but I'd like to repeat it for this larger crowd. We hear again and again, I hope, I hope you hear it often, just how much God loves us. But does it occur to us the implication then that God also likes us, delights in who we are, our personality, our quirks, and critically, delights in our presence? You know, we see that explicitly, for example, in Martha and Mary. Martha was running around, busy trying to serve him, and Mary just kind of chills. There's a time for running around. There's a time for mission, right? It's what, what mass means. It comes from missio, mission. But no adoration of Jesus is complete without just being with him. So if I can offer and close with just with one suggestion, this epiphany. You know, I've been reading and hearing about some folks picking up again the practice of letter writing in this time of pandemic, you know, and how it offers this special personal connection between writer and recipient. I really enjoy seeing, like, the uniqueness of my friend's penmanship, you know, maybe the little doodles they throw in there as well. It takes a little extra time and effort, a little more reflection and thought, because you can't just easily erase a whole paragraph. There's something intimate about it. So my practical suggestion, this epiphany, is to consider trying just that. Sure, write to your friends and your family. It's a delightful thing to do. But write also to our Lord, our friend, and our brother, Jesus. Tell him whatever you want. Tell him you're glad he was born. Share your struggles and your hopes and your joys. Tell him what you're grateful for. Ask him questions and pay careful attention to your life and see what answers may be revealed. You might begin this as a regular prayer practice throughout the year. Bottom line, just find a way to hang out with the guy. <laughs> just hang out with him, be with him. Because that's the whole point here. On Christmas, uh, God's Christmas gift to us, if you will, is himself in the person of Jesus. So the best gift that we could possibly give in return is ourselves, our time, our presence, and our love. This is all that God asks for and all God wants this Christmas is you. We stand now to renew our faith. We'll do so in the questions like they do at the baptismal rit rit liturgy. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our life's journey brings us this day to celebrate Christ, the light of the world. So let us pause now to pray for all in need, especially those who still seek him. That the church, the people of God, will manifest Christ's presence by all people with acts of mercy and justice, we pray. That the world's leaders will work diligently to bring about lasting and just peace, we pray. May those who honor and follow Jesus of Nazareth offer to the world 
Not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but love, compassion, and acceptance, we pray. Refugees, migrants, and the dispossessed, and all who search for a place to call home, will receive a new birth in freedom and opportunity, we pray. For the safety of all those affected by severe weather, travelers, those without adequate housing or clothing, the elderly, and those who work outdoors, we pray. That those who are sick will be relieved of their suffering during this Christmas season, we pray. That all those who have died, especially Joseph Ryan, will know the everlasting light of heaven, we pray. And for the intentions we hold in silence, we pray. Hear the prayers of your people, O oh God, our Father. Guide us to your Son and help us who behold him to behold him and all those we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because we're not able to uh, gather your financial offerings as we usually would, we invite you to place them in one of the metal boxes on the pillar there by the baptismal font. If you're uh, joining us from home, you may do so by mailing them to the parish office or setting up an online giving account if you go to the parish website, oldstmarys.com, you may click on the Donate button to do so. And as always, we thank you for your continuing support of the work of Old St. Mary's. <laughs> sisters and brothers, that our offering may be acceptable to God the Almighty. 
in order to put the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but he who made them, who by them is proclaimed, Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for all the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal flesh, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with the angels and saints and the whole company of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy, O Lord. You are the source of all holiness. And we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us and the blood of our